Galactic Standard Date, Year 11356, Day 95. Sol Standard Date, 4th of the 7th, 3267. Alert! Catastrophic damage incurred from unknown power surge. Automatic repair function activated, but unsuccessful in attempted full repairs. Alert! Catastrophic damage incurred from unknown power surge. Automatic repair function activated, but unsuccessful in attempted full repairs. Initiating Overmind 1.0 Reboot Sequence Delta Echo Alpha Tango Hotel. Bastus awoke to mental alarms blaring from his body's emergency maintenance protocols, his eyes slowly peeling open, as if he had been asleep for years. The light casting off the moon backlit Amaranth as she stared down at him with a worried expression. You're beautiful. You know that? Amaranth just smiled at him and chuckled, before wrapping Bastus in a hug and whispering, I thought you'd never wake up. You suddenly toppled over and started shaking as these lights ran for you and cracked your whole body like an egg. Are you... are you okay? Bastus brought his hand up to his face, noticing a line of golden and silver light etch itself across his hand, before the nanites pulled into the gap and repaired it. Ah, oh, I suppose that explains the looks I've been getting, he said, as she shrugged and gave her a half smile, before pointing a thumb off to the crowd of half spider, half elves. But yes, I feel fine for the most part. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't in pain, but that's nothing new, so yes, I'm fine. He stood up, shakily, and examined his body as the lights cut lines into every part of his body before they were inevitably repaired. Shit, they really are everywhere, huh? Wonder how I'm going to fix this one. He shrugged his shoulders a bit before turning to Rezaria. Well, I can't see myself magicking away this problem, so how about we finish our chat from earlier? I need coordinates to send my people. Razaria bowed her head and dropped her front legs into a spot like Neil. As you command, my lordship, I have gathered the requisite information while you slumbered. You will see here that there are several politics that we have had contact with that not even the GC knew about. However, we will hold nothing from you, she said, as she handed him a tablet that displayed the locations of even primitive civilizations that Razaria had found and set under a protected status. As Basilus looked through the gathered information, he shook his head solemnly. God, we are going to be spread thin, unless we can get you in the GC combat capable. I suppose I should personally suit to the protection of the other two who were part of your alliance, and then have my troops spread around to the other peoples, and have the GC start defending itself as soon as possible. They should be properly armed within another two days, about four days for a neural net trace, so that we can just upload their minds into a training sim. Another week of them being in a hyperspeed sim, and they should be fresh out of basic, essentially... Fuck. Some of my people are going to end up dead spinning ourselves so thin for that long. I guess it's time to make a formal address. He walked past Amaranth and reeled his sword back before frosting out and piercing the veil. Guess I'll try something new with my unlimited energy. As the sword sunk into the veil, he pushed his own energy into the cracks that were formed and repaired them. After they were repaired, he swirled the energy through the sword and into the veil before forming a bubble on the other side, creating a small shielded bridge. He forced the veil energies to circulate and open the hole wider, slowly creating a door that was big enough for himself and Amaranth to walk through. Finally, he slowly pulled the sword free, trying not to damage the thin membrane of energies that separated the madness of the veil from this dimension. Ah, oh, guess I don't necessarily need the fancy words anymore, unless I need to do this quickly. Amaranth jumped on the Basilisk's back and shrunk herself down before poking at his cheek. Make sure we come back to watch the moon sometimes, Bessie. He chuckled to himself and reached a hand back to pat Amaranth's head. Sure, sure, we can come back whenever you want. He was about to step through the thin membrane of energy before he heard a familiar voice yell out to him. My Lord Basilus, please allow this humble servant Rezeni to accompany you, she said, as she knelt before him. Basilus just sighed and shot his shoulders. Whatever, it wouldn't hurt to have an ambassador of your people as I talk to mine, as long as you get permission from your mum. Razina looked back to her mother who just winked and nodded to her. Rezeni looked back to her mother who just winked and nodded to her. Rezeni looked back to Basilus with a gleam in her eyes and then bowed her head once more. I am yours, my lord. Amaranth poked her head up over Bastus's shoulder with a shocked look in her face. Hold on, what did you just say? This is my man, get your own. Rezeni blinked in the surprise a couple of times before it dawned on her. Oh, I see. You are his main wife. Surely as a god he has many though. After all, as his eminence is the greatest being in existence, it should stand that he should not be shackled to one. Amaranth just stared at the small spider woman with a shocked and conflicted look. B but, yeah. You will not trick me into giving up any of his time. For his part, Bastus just sighed and rubbed his temples, before turning and stepping straight into the rift and glancing back at Rosini. She jumped up and threw, quickly followed by Lucan. Rosini looked back at Lucan in shock. You didn't get permission from Lord Bastus. Quick, jump back out. 
Lucian looked at her and shook his head. No, I go where you go. I was raised as your personal guard. There is nothing for me aside from the job I was literally born to do. If he does not like that, then he is free to send me to my brothers in the Vale. Basler sparked a harsh laugh and slapped his knee, resulting in a metallic clang that rang out for miles in the hellscape that was the Vale. I like you. You constantly give me that soldier's attitude. It's refreshing as fuck. I honestly don't know if most of your kind is bulls like we do, but hell, I know you do. Yeah, you're going to be a very welcome tag along. He breathed out of a relieved sigh and waved the two of them along. Come on, we haven't got all day, he said with a contented smile. The group moved along through the corridor that Bassus created for the hellscape of the Vale in silence until he finally raised his sword and stabbed at nothing yet again. He let the energy slowly create a safe membrane to prevent any accidents. After about a minute and a half, he had opened another rift overlooking a gothic throne room decorated in gruesome trophies and the flags that represented the different guilds in Terran space. Basler stepped out, creating a heavy metallic thud as his armoured feet struck the blackened stone floor. As soon as he set that first foot inside, red lights began to slowly fill out the murals in the floor and walls, writing the story behind each trophy kill that lined the walls. Rosalie and Lucian stood at the precipice of the rift and stared apprehensively at the room, yet their features betrayed their awe at the spectacle before them. Rosalie took her first tentative step into the room, and she could feel herself trembling with excitement. The throne of God, she said breathlessly. Lucan just nodded as he took in the many trophies around him, awestruck at the colossal size of the room that managed to fill several Azerian heads that were upwards of 60 feet of the smallest. Basler slowly walked to the throne room and sat. As soon as contact was made with the highest seat of power in Terran space, dim lights illuminated Basilus, and he began his speech. People of the Empire, I come before you today with bittersweet news. We have made official contact with so many new races that it almost makes our long, lonely trek with the Void seem like a cosmic joke. Yet, I have also found out that our arch-enemy Mel has ordered our newfound friends to become food for his Azarian bastards. I liberated the homeworld of the Rosari moments ago, and we are currently protecting the 17 races of the GC, as you know. However, the Rosari have informed me that the now total of 18 races that we have under our protection is not even half of the known sapiens out there. There are many who haven't even left the confines of their world to explore the unknown. All of these poor primitive aliens who didn't even know anything lie beyond their horizon. They have been contempt to death. Because of me. There's not even to say anything of the untold lives being lost this very second, and worlds that have breached the stars but know nothing of our war with the Azarians. Truly, Mel's petty bullshit has roped trillions of innocents into our war, maybe even more than that. These aliens are not prepared. They are less capable of combating the Azarians than we were at the start of our war with them. These people have not unlocked the secrets of time, so Mel can just resurrect his beasts as soon as they die. We are not there to stop him from doing so. Thus, it is with a truly heavy heart that I humbly request any and all assistance in this war effort that can be spared. I will not order anyone to come back to the service that has already served their terms, but please, help me. Help them, he said, as he bowed deeply to the unseen cameras. Mel was watching, as his people washed over the pitiful creatures like an unending tidal wave, taking grim satisfaction at the destruction. A sadist, fang smile spread across his disgusting maw as he watched the horrors. Suddenly he felt a familiar tug at his soul. His smile was replaced with a knowing fearful gaze as he looked towards human space. What was that?